Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Bean. I'm Callie. I'm Brittany. David. This is my lovely fiance, who we have that I just hit. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to play a game today called Judge a Book by Its Cover. So we're going to give Brittany and David a cover, and they're each going to try and guess what the book is about. Whoever is the closest will get a point. We have ten books with some tiebreaker books as well. So let's see whoever gets the most points. So I'm going to start with the easy ones. Am I giving it to one person or both people? You can give it to both. They can look at it. <laughs> Flip through it or are we just... No! No! It's no. <laughs> just a book by its cover. Can you read the back? <laughs> <laughs> I think it has to do with three girls because the eyes look like slash marks. So I think that indicates that there are three girls fighting for something. And there's a monster, and it's a mystery because Stephen King is recommending it, and that's all I got. I, I had a pretty similar theory, but I don't think that they're actually uh, fighting for something. I think it's more of them trying to actually uh, survive and uh, make it through the story. I'm not sure that the slash marks actually indicate the number of people. I think that's just how many eyes were actually on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I think it is a mystery type of thriller book um, where there is some sort of creature that's trying to probably slash them up and them trying to live throughout the story. Okay. To, yeah. okay. Are we going to tell? This follows some girls who all survived some tragedy. They were the only girl left alive in mass murders. Oh. Like a horror story, there's always one girl left There's one behind. girl that lives. Uh. This is all about those one girls. And this is kind of like the aftermath oh. where someone is killing final girls, because there's a club called Final Girls, and oh, someone is going around club. killing them. <laughs> yep. I mean... If you're already the last person left, you need somebody to relate to. Yeah. It's just kind of someone to relate to. It's, it's, yeah. So it is them kind of trying to team up together to try and figure out who is killing them and why. So it is a mystery thriller, which I think only David said it was a thriller. You just said mystery. I just said mystery. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say I'm probably going to give the point to David this okay. time. Okay. So the next one we have Spindle Fire by Alexa Hillier. All right. This this one's definitely a type of uh, higher fantasy, I think. Um, it's obviously um, has something to do with maybe a retelling of uh, one of the classic fairy tales, but with a twist, um, probably putting the uh, main princess at more of the protagonist trying to... Oh, jeez. I'm not really <laughs> sure which one it would be, though. But I'm guessing it's, like, at the actual, like, fall of a kingdom where she's trying to probably either lead her people a state of normality. That's my guess. So it's a Sleeping Beauty retelling. Um, <laughs> and I think in... Dead. So it's Sleeping Beauty retelling, and um, in this one, I don't think she wakes up. Maleficent's character, but it isn't Maleficent exactly, decides to destroy the kingdom and takes it over. But then the princess is awakened by her Prince Charming, and together they fight to take over the evil queen. This is a Sleeping Beauty retelling. <laughs> <laughs> but it follows... Aurora and her half-sister. Oh. So, Aurora and Isabel, who Isabel is the king's illegitimate daughter, and Aurora is the actual Sleeping Beauty as we know her. Um, when Aurora is falls asleep, it is Isabel who has to try and break the curse, not a Prince Charming. Oh. So it's about sisterly love. So it's like Frozen meets Sleeping Beauty. Yes. It's like Frozen. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what it is. So yep. I'll, Brittany gets the point for Sleeping Beauty retelling. <laughs> All right. Zodiac by Ro Romina Russell. I don't know. What you looking at me for? <laughs> Look at the cover. At the it's cover. so obvious. <laughs> I know, but I'm trying to figure out a plot to go with it. It's about grabs. I think it's a sci-fi that takes place in space. Each... Zodiac sign is represented by a character, and there's an extra sign that we are not aware of that's trying to take over the universe because it says beware of the 13th sign. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I got. So I think that this is a type of uh, thriller-esque book where my guess is there's probably like some sort of like incarnates of the Zodiac that exist throughout the world and establish some form of a balance throughout the story and throughout history and 
there is then some sort of competing uh, 13th uh, sign or change in the balance, as it were, that tries to upset this, and then the 12 existing people have to come together to try and stop whatever this 13th Zodiac is doing. And I'm ready to be wrong. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> I guess I'll just read the back because this back's really short. In a galaxy where your sign determines which planet you call home, a young oh. guardian <sighs> of cancer... I knew it was about the queen. ...must find a way to unite the divided houses of the Zodiac before an ancient evil destroys them all. So the signs are planets. It's like and a depending on where you were born determines which planet you go to. Oh. Hence the zodiac signs, and we follow a guardian of cancer, which is oh. by the crab. Oh. It's also obvious now. Yes, yeah, I know. Because of the crab. Yeah, the crab. There's two of them. They were right in front of you. Double. Oh, there's a third crab on the side. Yeah, I think that's actually what cancer is. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna call this one a draw and yeah. no one gets a point. Next we have I'm ready to tie it one one. <laughs> We have Vicious by B.E. Schwab. Yikes. <laughs> well, as you can tell, it's addictive. I'm guessing that this is probably following somebody that was a uh, trained killer of some sort, whether it was an assassin or some sort of, like, spy agency that follows through. There is some sort of event that transpires where this person um, ends up being wronged in some way, either by the organization he was from or something along those lines that causes him to try and then go through like this uh, tear, kind of leaving uh, as a trail of bodies as it was, trying to get to the bottom and therefore revenge on whoever actually had done the wronging in the first place. So this gives me Dexter vibes, like it's a serial killer, but He's killing bad guys, has a change of heart. Yeah, so overall I think this is about a serial killer, but he's killing bad guys. So this is an anti-hero superhero book. <laughs> I feel like that's what I said. This follows two guys who um, are best friends, um, who are going into the field of um, genetics, genetic enhancement, genetic modification to create kind of superhero like P type of powers in humans. It can basically be, think Deadpool. Yeah. Deadpool-ish. Deadpool Captain America. So, <laughs> oh, they end up it's being- It's so obvious now. They end up competing <laughs> against each other and hating each other. And then we fast forward 20 years where they are now arch enemies trying to destroy each other's works. Oh, that's uh, still at 1-1. One, one. <laughs> yeah. Yes or yeah, yes. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Hopefully this is a little bit easier. Probably not. This is Novice by Taran Mathuru. It's a little creature on it. I'm not gonna help you. <laughs> So this is the first book in the series. Oh. I got that part. <laughs> I think the war that's referenced is like the light versus dark, so like angels versus demons. But the angels are the bad guys, and the demons come to help him defeat the angels. We follow like the battles and the war and all of that. And he befriends a demon that becomes his best friend that they fight the angels together. And there's like a little creature thing that's really cute. <laughs> All right. So I had some similar thoughts about the war. Um, this is probably going to start out with this guy being probably more normal. Um, there's going to be someone he'll come across or seek out that will train him in the art of becoming a summoner. Um, he'll start out probably as a novice. I think he gets this creature um, I think, I want to say that this is a dragon. I'm going to go on record saying it's a dragon. Um, or some sort of reptilian creature. That's really cool. It's probably going to grow up with him throughout the series. Uh, kind of, you know, a little bit Game of Thrones style in that regard. Where it's gonna, he's going to have this creature that's going to eventually become more powerful. It's probably going to help him at some point as a turning point in the war. But I'm guessing this book itself doesn't get a whole lot into that. I, I'd assume there's probably at least two, three, four other books in this series. Um, so yeah, it's probably going to be a lot about his adventure in honing his craft to attempt to win the war. But this book itself is probably going to be a lot more about staying alive and building allies. Okay, David, wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 
horns. <laughs> so Fletcher runs, can't, comes across a stranger who drops a book yeah. called the Summoner's Manual, <laughs> and he summons this little salamander. <laughs> <laughs> Who's his little demon buddy? And then he goes to Rad's one on his shoulder, literally. Yeah. Um, so when people find out that he is a summoner, which is kind of described as a rich man's talent. And he's an a blacksmith. He's an, a, he's an orphan blacksmith. Prince. Yes, basically. So when they find out that he can be a summoner, he goes to summoner school and starts off as a novice. Oh, yes. It's a school? Yeah. Yeah. It's a school. There is a war, but it's a war with orcs. Oh. <laughs> Try. Next, we have the Voodoo Killings by Christy Cherish. Yeah, there's not a whole lot I feel like you can discern from this cover. At least none that not much that I can. So I guess a lot of what I'm kind of pulling from is like the title of it actually being the Voodoo Killings. I think that's probably fairly self-explanatory. <laughs> it looks like it's set in probably uh, cities. My guess would be like New York or Chicago. Uh, modern times. Um, I assume that there's probably some crazed maniac, like witch doctor person, that's finding and meeting uh, these women and trying, or and I don't know, stealing like a piece of their hair or something. You know how how voodoo works, I guess. <laughs> Making voodoo dolls, like trying to either capture or murder them and such. And a lot of it, what this is going to be about is probably, my guess is the victims trying to actually get to the bottom of this case. I'm guessing the cops probably ignore them um, because voodoo killings is probably not something that goes over well when you report it to your local authorities. Um... <laughs> I wouldn't know from experience, but I can't imagine uh, <laughs> saying that with a straight face and expecting help. <laughs> um, that's uh, locked in as my official guess. <laughs> I guess similar thoughts, um, only I think it's in New Orleans, because when I think voodoo, I think Mardi Gras and all that. I also think it's modern day, um, and the girl on the cover is supposed to be the main character, and it's a thriller mystery where her best friend was killed because of voodoo mad magic, and <laughs> that's... <laughs> um, she's trying to figure out the killer, and then slowly there's other victims, and again, if she tries to go to the police, they laugh at her. So she's trying to figure out everything um, before she becomes a victim herself. You're gonna get the point because it is in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> The main Excellent. character in this book, she's a, a voodoo practitioner. Oh. oh. <laughs> and someone's going around killing other other voodoo practitioners, and huh. basically oh. then bringing them back as zombies. And she has to figure out who's doing that. Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting like Native American vibes. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I think it's like a historical fiction meets thriller mystery and someone dies in like a ritual and the main character has to figure out why. And as it goes on, there's more children that die in this ritual. I wanna say a lot of this like headdress and such uh, and as well as like the face painting kind of leads me more towards Africa, which Kind of weirds me out a lot because she has white hair and blue eyes, which are very much not those traits. But I still think the rest of it seems to fit more with uh, Africa. I think it's more about um, this uh, priestess of sorts that leads um, probably a tribe of uh, children. Um, my guess is war survivors um, that she tries to kind of keep together and keep alive throughout the story. I think that's kind of the most I can really get out of this cover. So David's right, it is African. Yes. Um, Blue eyes threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> so this follows a tribe that used to be filled with magic, but magic just all of a sudden went away. Um, and our main, character, <laughs> our main character has a chance to go on a quest to bring back the magic and rebel against the monarchy. David forgetting Africa? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Next we have A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. So this is, looks like it's a modern day retelling, I think of two college students I'm gonna go with. 
Um, it's uh, Sherlock Holmes retelling, probably with this, uh, either with this girl as the main character being the Sherlock Holmes. Um, I'm not sure if it's her name, Charlotte, or if this follows her looking for, although it could actually be that she's the daughter of Sherlock Holmes. No, that's too far for it to be modern. Um, now I'm gonna go with it's a retelling with her as really Sherlock Holmes' descendant, uh, where she kind of goes on to kind of take up the mantle of her predecessor, probably to search out some sort of uh, killing, probably similar to like the Jack the Ripper type of a story. Um, Sherlock Holmes, you know, famous unsolved case type of thing. And it follows her and probably one of her friends uh, from university uh, trying to get to the bottom of some sort of killings. I mean, we're pretty much having the similar feels. I know it's a gender bent um, Sherlock Holmes retelling. But <laughs> as far as like the actual plot of the story, that's as far as I got. I know that it's like modern day and it's a series. They, and I do agree that it probably takes place in like a college town. And if they solve a mystery, and Charlotte is the main character. I'll agree with you on that one. Um, I believe it's about the descendants of Sherlock Holmes mm -hmm. and yes. John Watson. Mm -hmm. It is modern. I'd give it to both of them. Then. I was gonna say I'm. I'd give, give it to both, both of you. Both y'all get a point. Yay! No, Dark no. Tide by Jennifer Donnelly. Let's see. So I think this is like a Little Mermaid meets Mulan type story. It takes place where this girl has to go in disguise as a mermaid to bring honor to her family by getting this rare stone. And then there's a lot of action in there where she has to fight pirates. So it looks like this is a third book. I'm definitely getting a lot of the strong kind of Disney vibes, but I'm assuming that being the third book, it's going to start quite a bit further into the story where I'm, I'm guessing Dark Tide is in some sort of reference to some rather impending doom to her people. Um, also, there's like this ominous uh, angler fish here that I'm not really sure what it's doing this far up <laughs> sea level wise, but it's very creepy. So uh, it kind of speaks more towards this. I'm guessing there's something she needs to seek out um, before this supposed calamity comes to befell her people. Uh, I'm definitely getting, uh, I, I could definitely see the Mulan type of thing because of it has a lot of these, she has a lot of these Asian style garments on. There is something that she needs to seek out, whether it is this orb displayed here in the cover picture, uh, thwart the calamity of her generation. Great, this is the third book in the Deep Blue series. So the girl on the cover is actually not the main character. Unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> So our main character is Serafina, who is a mermaid princess, um, who her entire kingdom is attacked upon and um, killed by humans um, who have teamed up with their enemy in Merland. So Serafina has to connect with the princesses of other um, water realms this oh. is one of the this is um one of the princesses of another realm that she yeah. teams up with and they have to try and find different artifacts i want to say david because you yeah, said that she changed she was you said that yeah, she changed into a yeah. mermaid where this is they're just all mermaids <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i thought it was a disguise the last book good <laughs> <laughs> it's someone it's it's someone <laughs> salty <laughs> <laughs> Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. Do you not know what this is? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> this follows um, this uh, girl as a main character who is quite obviously some form of assassin, probably raised as an assassin. I'm guessing a lot because it references things like uh, Game of Thrones on the cover. Um, it's gonna be a lot about her probably trying to either overthrow some sort of kingdom or take back uh, some uh, region that she was in charge of or that she cares a lot about and her really just trying to go through probably over the course of a couple of books 
um, the process of assembling people to build up enough forces in order to reclaim what she probably sees as belonging to her or her people. So the only thing I can remember about this is that it's a loose Cinderella re um, retelling, only instead of her going to the ball to fall in love with the prince, she is the assassin that goes to the ball to kill the prince. And um, throughout the series, you follow different assassins as they partner up to overthrow the uh, monarchy. We follow Selena, who, yes, it, this is a loose Cinderella retelling. Very loose. Very loose. <laughs> I, said loose. I know, I know, but you're, you're right. Good, you're good. That is how the author has described it. Um, this book in particular, she is in a competition to become the king's assassin. Life or death assassin games um, for her to try and become the king's assassin to do things to, as David mentioned, take back what she believes is hers, which through eight books, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. we follow Selena, her trying to get more people to take take back what's hers. So I'd give that to both of you. You yep. got the simple answer. He got the more complicated. overarching, complicated <laughs> one. <laughs> So, David's our winner for today. We will probably do more things like this eventually. Because um, <laughs> it's entertaining. Mainly for us. <laughs> <laughs> so feel free to like, comment, subscribe. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. If you um, <laughs> like what you're watching, you can hit the bell icon down below, and you'll be notified whenever we post new videos. And make sure you follow us on Instagram. Our individual candles will be below, as well as our joint account. So that's going to be it for today, and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye.